In this episode of Thinking Machines, we're going to look at Steel Toe and how you add it into a .NET application, as well as its recommended minimum packages. Let's get started. When you create microservices in the cloud, there are gimmies and gotchas you're going to discover along the way. A few notables are uh, no disk for writing logs. You want to write a console and stream the messages. No local sessions. Instead, use a separate store, like a cache, to hold the temporary values. Containerization is assumed. Got to get good, good at that. There are going to be lots of other services to communicate with, and all of them over HTTP. Got to get good at that, too. Using observability techniques for debugging and app performance is a must. .NET gives you a serious jump start into managing all these things, but sometimes we need to get a little more specific and configure just a little bit further. How far do you go? How much time do you spend wiring everything up? How is all this going to be recreated locally to match production? You could spend a lot of time, seemingly boilerplate stuff, creating health endpoints, exported distributed tracing, uh, creating some formalized structure for logging, or you could choose Steel Toe. Steel Toe offers different libraries that can be added into a .NET application that either completely take care of the boilerplate stuff or simplifies things to just a few config values. Now, don't get me wrong. Steel Toe is much more than making boilerplate stuff easy. In fact, this really isn't even the core focus on the project. But today we're focused on the basics. And if you're going to run .NET microservices in the cloud, then I believe Steel Toe is the first place to uh, start. Let's head over to the big screen and see how all this is done. All right, so first we're gonna spin up a new web API project in Visual Studio. Nothing too terribly out of the ordinary here. First, let's tackle health reporting. Uh, this is done by creating an endpoint within the app that returns an HTTP status of 200. That 200 status signifies health. Instead of writing up the controller in every single service, Steel Toe offers a feature called management endpoints. These packages take care of writing up certain common microservice tasks, like health checking and posting metrics or posting request traces things that I would consider a requirement of every microservice, but not something I want to spend a lot of time coding up. There are a whole collection of different things that can be enabled with these endpoints, each one making your app more useful uh, in the cloud. Right now, we're going to look at the recommended minimum, which is enabling the health endpoint. All the Steel Toe libraries are distributed through NuGet. So to add Steel Toe's health endpoint library, Search NuGet in Visual Studio for steeltoe.management.endpointcore package and add it to your project. Now over to the startup to add the middleware. Opening the startup class and in config services function, add the add health actuator statement. This initializes the new endpoint at slash health. To complete the middleware package, we'll also include the use health actuator statement in the configure section. This enables the new endpoint and applies proper configuration. And speaking of configuration, we could customize things a bit, like the naming of the endpoint or the path of the endpoint. All this is done in the app settings JSON file. For this example, we're gonna go with just the defaults. So we've now enabled the health check endpoint in our .NET app using Steel Toe without having to mess with this single controller. Easy. The logic for deciding health is as simple as it gets. If the endpoint returns an HTTP status of 200, then it's healthy. We could build this out a little further with health contributors. Steel Toe has pre-made contributors for watching disk space, RabbitMQ for your message queue, Redis for a cache, or watching a relational database. You could also create custom contributors uh, when you code in the logic. No matter the contributors and logic you choose, the request is always the same. Uh, the health endpoint needs to return a status of 200 on every request. All right, so now moving on to logging. Like the health check endpoint, you could do all this yourself. 
and you could debug it and you could iterate on it, or you could use Steel Toes Logging Provider. This .NET config provider is an abstraction from the console and also offers a more structured way of classifying logs, info, warn, error, etc. For all, first add the NuGet dependency steeltoe.extensions.logging.dynamictrace in your app. Then in the program class, implement the provider add dynamic console statement. And that's it. You've implemented the uh, controller. To make use of the new provider, we'll add it into our controller via dependency injection. Then it's in the constructor. We're going to add a quick log message just to show the function of it. Now, when you run the application, go to the values endpoint, look at the logs, and see the different example messages. Using a dynamic logger may not seem like a real big event, but consider what the app is given. Instead of having to manage every single console write or taking out the debt of creating your own logger, you get the best of both worlds with Steel Toe. Best of all, you've checked off one of the 12 factors, streaming logs. And you're giving the app really great portability between platforms. Great. Now let's check back, wrap up, and talk about next steps. Steel Toe gives you the ability to standardize on the essential cloud stuff while taking on very little debt and very little custom code. From here, you can get into the more fun stuff of Steel Toe uh, that it offers. Service connectors, external configurations, service discovery, circuit breakers, and more. Look for the link below in the video and learn more about Steel Toe today. And thank you for watching.